Hello and welcome to the AllFacts video training series. Today's video will cover the basic copy functions of your Sharp Color Copier. Let's get started. At your machine, select the Copy button. The main copy screen will open. On the left side, you have your basic functions. On the right side, you have the action panel at the top. And in the lower right, you have your black and white and color start buttons. Now, let's take a detailed look at the action panel. The action panel provides the user access to additional functions once they have selected one of the buttons in the basic menu. For example, if we pick two-sided copy, if you notice on the right side, the action panel has changed and given us access to some additional functionality and things that might be combined with two-sided. If you notice, there's original, in up, margin shift, staples a good one. So based on what you select in the basic menu, the action panel will display those associated features for you. Another helpful feature found in the action panel is the send and print feature. This feature allows you to make a copy and scan the document at the same time. So let's take a look. Click on the Send and Print button. Select an email address from the address book. Select the Enter Address button in the lower right. At this point, if we load our original in the document feeder on the glass and then select the Start button, it will make a copy of our original along with sending a PDF of the original to the email address selected. This feature can be very helpful if you have to scan and copy a particular original. Now let's take a look at the basic copy functions of your Sharp Color Copier. The first button on the left side in the basic menu is the color mode. Here the user can select between auto, full color, black and white. We'll leave two color and single color for the more advanced training class. The machine by default will be in the auto color mode. This will help the user if I in producing exactly what they put uh, on the glass of the document feeder. For example, if they put 10 sheets and it's in the document feeder and there's a mix of black and white sheets and color sheets, if they select the color start button, the machine will produce exactly what is loaded in the feeder. So the black and white sheets will be produced as well as the color sheets. If they select uh, the black and white start button, with that same original, it will produce the entire document in black and white and the color sheets will be basically grayscale or a shading uh, representing the color. The next button down is the original button. Here the um, machine will detect the size of the original uh, whether it's in the glass or, or, or on the glass of the document feeder. So if you notice it says auto and it says eight and a half by eleven. It has detected an eight and a half by eleven sheet that's loaded in our document feeder. If you wanted to override that automatic functionality, you can select the original button and pick one of the sizes listed below. If you notice, there's a standard sizes. You have direct entry, which would allow you to set a size. If you wanted to set it uh, six by nine or something like that, you could do it there. The next button down is Paper Select. The machine is auto automatically going to pick the paper tray for you based on the original size. And if you wanted to, in this case, our machine has four trays. If we had placed a blue stock and wanted to copy onto that in the bypass, or let's say tray four, you can manually select that tray from here. The machine would run the copy job on the paper that's in tray 4. We could also do the same thing here with the bypass. At this point there's no paper in our bypass that's why we have the little message in the lower right. Let's tell it OK. Next button down, we'll hit clear all to clear everything out. Next button down is two-sided. Then uh, on each button on the two-sided window if you notice um, you have them listed one-sided to one, one to two, two to two, and then two to one. The numbers on the left side of each button are what you have in your hand, your original, and it points to the copy it's going to produce. 
So if I have a bunch of one-sided originals and want to make them two-sided, I would pick one to two there and it would run that job. If my original is two-sided and I wanted an exact copy, I would pick two-sided to two-sided. Let's hit clear all, get out of that one. The next button down is copy ratio. This is reduction and enlargement and the first four buttons on the screen are kind of shortcuts. If you notice, look at 64% and right underneath it, it has 11 by 17 with an arrow pointing at 8.5 by 11. Again, Sharp kind of carries that theme of the original of what you have in your hand will be on the left side of any indicator or button. So look at the 64%, 11 by 17 with an arrow point to 8.5 by 11. That means at 64% it would reduce an 11 by 17 original to fit on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. If you come down to the next one, it says 11 by 17 to legal paper or 8.5 by 14, it would do that. On the other side, it's a smaller size original being enlarged onto a bigger sheet of paper and you have those settings there which are 121 and 129. Let's say we had picked 64 percent earlier and we're reducing it and decided we wanted to adjust it. You can move in one percent increments. These four just get you in the ballpark and a lot of times that'll suffice for what the user's wanting to do. We'll hit clear all and get out of there. The next button down is exposure. This is how you lighten or darken uh, your copies. The machine by default is in auto, so what auto means, it's going to detect the background image on each original as they pass through the feeder or they're scanned on the glass, and it will adjust based on that. You can manually override it by hitting the um, manual button and lightening or darkening the uh, copies. Additionally, if you notice there's some settings down below there for basically automatic settings based on what type of uh, document uh, you have whether it's a photo or a light original or something like that we'll hit clear all next button down is staple sort here you can uh, have your machine automatically since our machine for the video has a uh, finisher on it we could pick one staple it's going to drop a staple in the top left corner of an 8.5 by 11 sheet. Uh, it will staple up to 50 sheets. doesn't matter if they're single-sided or two-sided. It's just that thickness of the stack. If we have ledger or legal paper, it's 30 sheets of both of those and again in the top left corner. If I pick two staples, that would be two in the left margins. Same uh, specifications, 50. Uh, for letter and then 20, uh, excuse me, 30 for legal and 30 for the ledger. You also have a button that says stapleless staple. What happens, it actually shows you the little image. It's going to run a crimp in the top left corner of your original. It will only crimp five sheets. This is a way if, you want, if you're going to set up a meeting and there's a possibility you may want to pull the sets apart. Uh, at some point during the meeting, you could run this feature uh, and have it bind your documents together. Okay, clear all. Now, let's look at the bottom three buttons in the basic menu. You have the star, the check, and others. The star is the favorites. This allows you to save settings that you repetitively use. For example, if we click on the star on our machine for the video, we have a button that says reports. If we select reports and tell it OK, at this point you notice there's a couple of things checked. Basically we have single or two sided turned on and one staple in the top left corner for a report. So that way we don't have to set it up every time we just select reports. If you have multiple favorites stored, the check button can be very helpful. If you're unsure of what is stored under uh, the reports favorite, you could select it, then click the check uh, button, and it would display the functions that are saved under the report setting. This can be helpful if you start having multiple favorites created and something gets lost with the naming. So we'll tell it OK to get out of there and clear all. The next button is the others button. 
this lists all of the image editing features available on the sharp color copier so we're going to select that you see your list you can actually scroll down to the second page and see additional things we're going to look at a couple here in more detail that we think uh, could be very beneficial to the users dual page copy on the front screen and if we scroll down to the back you'll see job build let's take a closer look at both of these To access dual page copy, go to your machine, press the copy button, press others, press dual page copy. Take your book or bound document and line the binding up with the picture of a book on the back of the glass. Press your start button. The machine will copy both halves of the glass and put them on two eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. There's dual page copy. Another feature that can be very useful, especially when copying a document with a high number of sheets is job build. The limitation on how many sheets you can copy in one job run is determined by the page capacity of the document feeder. Job build is a way to get around that limitation. So let's take a look. We're going to go to copy. We're going to go to others. We're going to scroll to the second page and we're going to pick job build. We're going to load. Let's say this is our first 150 sheets. We're going to load that in the feeder and we're going to press start. The machine is waiting on us to load the additional sheets. So we can go ahead and do that and we're going to press the start key and it will feed the additional sheets. As you notice, nothing has been produced. Once we have all the sheets scanned in and we're ready, we'll press uh, read in and our job will be produced as one complete job. You can stand here and scan in up to 500 sheets and have the machine produce it as completed sets. Job build can be a really helpful feature. That completes our video, and thanks for watching. If you need additional information or support, please visit our website at www.allfacts.com. You can also contact us at our main number at 504 443 0188. On behalf of the entire All Facts team, we appreciate and value your business. Thanks, and have a great day.